Global Black History celebrates Maggie Walker, who opened a bank in Jim Crow South. Maggie L. Walker was the first African-American woman in the United States to found a bank. St. Luke Penny Savings Bank opened on November 2, 1903 in Richmond, Virginia, the former capital of the Confederacy. At the end of the day, the bank had 280 deposits totaling over $8,000 and sold about $1,247 worth of stock, bringing the total to $9,340 at the time. By 1920, Walker's Bank had reportedly helped customers buy over 600 homes. And by 1924, the bank had more than 50,000 members across the state of Virginia. The bank was continuously operated by African Americans until 2005. The Early History of Maggie Lena Walker Maggie Lena Mitchell was born in Richmond, Virginia, July 15, 1864, Her mother, Elizabeth Draper, was a former slave and assistant cook in the Churchill mansion of Elizabeth Van Loo, a Civil War spy. Later, Elizabeth and her husband, William Mitchell, moved the family to their own home in an alley between the Broad and Marshall Streets where Maggie and her brother Johnny were raised. After the untimely death of William Mitchell, Maggie's mother supported the family by working as a laundress, and young Maggie helped by delivering the clean clothes. Maggie Mitchell was educated in Richmond's public schools, and after graduation, she taught grade school for three years. Her teaching career ended in 1886 when she married Armstead Walker Jr. She then directed her energies towards caring for her family and strengthening the independent order of St. Luke. Life was full and prosperous for the Walkers and their sons, Russell and Melvin. But tragedy struck in 1915 when her husband was accidentally killed, leaving her to manage a large household. Her work and investments kept the family comfortable. And when her sons married, they brought their wives to 110 First East Lay Street. A major addition to the house in 1922 enabled Miss Walker to provide a home for her sons and their families, her mother and the household staff. Mrs. Walker's health gradually declined and by 1928 she was using a wheelchair. But despite her physical limitations, she remained actively committed to her life's work, including being the chairman of the bank and leader of the Independent Order of St. Luke until her death on December 15, 1934.